comes up with 175 meters, but it's playing, or this one says 176, but it's playing one degree up. So it's actually playing 180 is what it's telling me. So if I hit my 175 shot, let's say the flag was on the front and I hit my 175 shot because it's 175, but it's actually playing uphill one degree, it's, it's 180, or it might be two degrees, or it might be three degrees. You're going to come up significantly short. Welcome to the channel, guys. My name's Ryan Moke, and today I wanna to talk to you very quickly about some factors you need to consider or take into account when picking the yardage that you are going to hit this golf ball. What do I mean by that? We all grab a rangefinder or a GPS, and we zoom the flag, and what happens is we get a number. In this case, 175 meters. Now, typically we go and grab our 175 meter club and we go and hit it. Now, one thing to understand with your 175 meter club is sometimes you are going to hit that 180. Sometimes you are going to hit that 165. Sometimes you're going to hit it 170. So what we've got is a dispersion pattern from front to back. Most golfers think that they hit their golf clubs further than they do because there was one time where they hit that seven iron 160 and now all of a sudden it's 160. That's what I hit it and everything else is a miss hit. Where in fact, if you were to hit 10 golf shots with one club, you would have an average of what you hit your golf ball. So taking into account our front and back dispersion pattern with every club that you've got in your bag is a really important factor to take into account when picking a club to hit into the green. When you do this, one of the things you've got to make sure you do is you've got to make sure you're not picking a club that's going to fly all the way to a back flag because the likelihood is you could get that hot one that you hit and go over the back and all of a sudden we've short sighted ourselves. The same goes for a front flag location. If it's too far on the front and you hit your shot that only just gets there, you hit your 175 club to the 175 flag, Sure, you might get that hot one that hits behind the flag, but you also may get the one that comes up short. You might hit the 165 shot. Now, if you're carrying water, or if there's a big bunker short of the green, you're going to be in that. So you need to, you need to consider that when you're hitting a shot. Also, how well do you strike the middle of the face? Do you catch the middle of the face all the time? Do you hit it out of the heel? Do you hit it out of the toe? Do you yeah, commonly chunk the ball just a little bit? All those factors come into play when trying to get the right distance to go into that flag. So what are some other factors we need to consider when picking the right club? On my Bushnell here, I've got a slope function, right? So when I zoom this flag, comes up with 175 meters, but it's play, or this one says 176, but it's playing one degree up. So it's actually playing 180 is what it's telling me. So if I hit my 175, let's say the flag was on the front, and I hit my 175 shot because it's 175, but it's actually playing uphill one degree, it's, it's 180, or it might be two degrees, or it might be three degrees. You're going to come up significantly short, all because you didn't pick the correct club. Now, these aren't legal in tournament play, of course, but you should know your golf club well enough if you do have one of these to know what's uphill and what's downhill. I'm only out here practicing this morning so I can use it, it's, it doesn't matter. But what are some other factors we need to consider? The temperature. Is it hot? Is it a hot day? Ball will go further. Is it a cold day? Ball will go shorter. What about wind? Is it blowing five, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour? Not only that, but the flight that you hit the ball will be affected by the wind differently. If you hit a normal golf shot and you hit it high up in the air, that wind will knock it a lot more. If we flight one down, the wind won't touch it as much. So there's some things to consider in that. Another factor that a lot of people don't really understand is how you're feeling. Do you feel fast? Do you feel slow? Do you feel sluggish? Different days produce different swings. So one day I might feel like, you know, if I've been playing a lot, or if I've been practicing a lot, I might feel like I'm actually swinging it a bit faster, hitting it a little bit further. But if I've had a break for a week or two and I haven't swung a club, typically I'm going to be a little bit slower, which might mean that I don't hit the ball as far as I normally do. So that has to come into play. Typically, if I try and draw my golf ball, it goes a fraction further than if I try and fade it up in the air, just due to the fact that my swing path and face are closing down and it's kind of de-lofting the club just a little bit more, as opposed to my cut shot, uh, giving a little bit more shaft, a uh, little bit more vertical shaft towards impact and the ball going a little bit higher due to an open face. So, what do we hit? Okay, so I've got 176 meters here. I've got, it's playing 180 and the flag's at the back. 
So for me, this is a perfect five iron. I'm just going to basically cruise a five iron out there. It's a pretty good shot. Uh, 180 meters to get to the back. There's, I'm not saying there's no chance I can do that, but very, very unlikely that I do that. So let's go and aim at it. I know that this is a pretty comfortable club for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one, just a normal golf swing. There's a prime example of my miss hit. Thin that a little bit and it come up short. Now, because it's a back flag, I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to carry everything that is sitting on the front. But if I had a front flag location or a short right flag location trying to go at that and I miss hit that with that little thin shot, well, I'm gonna be in that big bunker that's on the right hand side and I'm gonna be very, very short. So I need to understand that when I'm in that situation, I might need to aim further left, or I might need to try and draw it into there, or I might need to play a four iron. All these things you need to consider in order to hit the ball the exact distance. It's not just zoom it, get the number, go ahead and hit. There's so many other elements that you need to take into consideration if you're going to hit the ball the correct distance. Guys, if you like that video, please press the like and subscribe button. Comment below how many other factors that do we need to consider when we're talking about how far we need our ball to go. Until next time, thanks for watching.